Alrighty, today's topic, you know, part of the reason I wanted to do this topic is because the markets have been turbulent lately. And we have talked for a while now of having strategies to sort of defend against, you know, rising interest rates. So you have that coupled with inflation you're going to create now with sort of a, a byproduct. And, you know, yesterday was, okay, comes roaring back. And today, just a, a, a thousand points, we've gave back everything we gained yesterday. And then so I have been approached by a couple of clients that are approaching retirement and concerned as much as I would like to say, Hey, everything's going to be fine. And, the, and it's clear skies ahead. I'm actually of the opinion that there's turmoil in the future. There's choppy water ahead, storm clouds ahead. To what degree? I don't know. Now, the other side of that is I am not a gloom and doom type of advisor. I'm pragmatic. And although I do understand turbulence, I also know that we can smooth that ride to a degree. And that was the purpose of today's call is things or an option, a strategy that can be implemented sometimes using some tools if you understand how they work. So part of that will be the education factor today. So I want to first start with what it is an annuity. In the industry, the lingo, it's called the MIGA. And I said, oh, MIGA. And I started thinking about it. I said, you know what? I need to spell that out. And although on the first slide, we see it's a multi-year guaranteed annuities, there's a couple things in there. A, nobody would know what a MIGA is unless they explain it. And B, what is an annuity? So I wrote out to what I view as a Reader's Digest version of what an annuity is. And it's really a promise from an insurance company to pay regardless of how long you live. And we're going to get into some details on that. The thing I wanted to um, sort of bring to the forefront, there's something called longevity credits. I used to do a, in my office breakfast with Chris, I used to show this. Suppose five 90-year-old women take a vacation together every year, and the five women place $100 in a box. Take that $100 times five, and you have $500, right? Now, because they're 90, unfortunately one of them passes. So the next year they meet for vacation, but now there's only four ladies left and they split the $500 that they put in the year before and they have $125. That's a 25% rate of return. The question was how much was invested in the market and what interest rate did it earn? Nothing, because they weren't in the market. That is longevity credits. But they decide to let it ride. And the next year, one more lady passes. And now the three ladies split the 500 to each get 167 or 67% return. It's all based on longevity credits. The other way that I'll explain this is to help you if you're, you're, you know, find yourself at the dinner table trying to explain this to somebody. Life insurance pays if you die. So everybody pulls their money together to pay a death benefit annuities pay if you live, right? You're still pulling your money together, but if you're one of those people that make it to 100, 110, 120, the insurance company or the pool of money is on the hook to pay for as long as you're alive. So there are only three tools that can guarantee payments for life. One of them is this, what I call a unicorn, is a pension. The other one, and a lot of people are in fear that, oh, so security, this is a promise from the federal government that, that they will pay you an income stream based on how much you contributed in. A lot of people are fearful, oh, it's, it's not going to be there. It's going to be bankrupt. For those of us on this call, I, I, I don't think we have any issues. You know, some of the, the younger generation, maybe the millennials, they will change the rules, but the funds will be there. But the other option is an annuity, and there's different elements to an annuity. We've all heard that commercial, I hate annuities and you should too. Well, there's aspects that maybe aren't attractive. 
but not every annuity has to be used in the same format. Not every tool is going to be utilized to do the same job. So I'm bringing up a slide that I've used in the past to help people to understand the left and the right side of the equation. The left side of the equation is what we call an immediate annuity. This is where you give up all control. You turn around, you're trading an asset to the insurance company. You're saying, here's my cash, here you go insurance company, and I can never get it back once I receive a payment option. This works just like a pension. So if you've ever seen a pension statement, where they say, hey, if you, you know, take this amount, you get 100% of this. But if, if you want to make sure that you get at least a payment for 10 years, that's a period certain, you'll get a little bit lesser amount. And if you want to make sure that your spouse gets something, then there's a survivorship, and then there's even a lesser amount, and, and then you can get a combination of. These are, when I'm dealing with federal employees, quite often pension options that usually if you have a corporation that has a pension or you have a, a municipality or federal government or even a, a state government offering these types of products, they're really just annuities with these terms. It's based on actuarial data. This is not what we're talking about. So because again, the reason people don't like the immediate annuity, if you think about it, let's say that you had a hundred grand. And you go to the insurance company, here's a hundred grand. Give me, I don't know, $80 a month for the rest of my life. Just, just arbitrary old number. And you turn around and cash that first check for $80. Would you agree that they have the other 99,920 bucks? They have the balance of your money. It hasn't gained interest. You've only cashed it one month. You've only, and you got hit by a bus. You had a bad day. They keep your money. This is why there's a lot of negative press because nobody wants to exercise that risk. Okay? We don't know how long we're going to live. Everybody, oh, no, no, you could do it. You could take it. You can invest it in the market. You could do better than that. You know, and the problem is, None of us know when we're going to die. So we, you know, that's the trade-off, right? But I'm not, I'm not here to, to sway your opinion one way or the other. I just want you to understand how an immediate annuity works. And that's called annuitization. That word means that you have given up. It's an irrevocable decision where you said to the insurance company, here's my money, pay me, whether I live a day, I cash a check, I live a month. I live till I'm 120, you must pay me for the rest of my life or my spouse. That's why when you sometimes, it, well, it's confusing or I didn't understand what the best option was, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today is a deferred annuity and there are different types, variable or fixed. Now, if you've ever listened to me before, I don't like an abundance of risk. And this is where when you hear that commercial on the radio, I hate annuities and you should too. Typically what they're talking about is variable annuities. You're basically saying to an insurance company, here you go, here's some money. I'm going to take all the investment risk so you can lose money inside of it and they're expensive. What we're going to talk about are fixed annuities in two different versions. In the past, I've talked about index annuities. When I did my Allianz bonus 222 about a month ago, they had a 35% bonus. They have some new indexes. That's not what we're going to talk about. What we're going to talk about is that MIGA, the multi-year guaranteed annuity. And the way that that works, and the product that I'm going to show at the end of the call today, it's really the insurance company's version of a CD. It's, it's for a period of time. It's guaranteed by the, by the creditworthiness of the financial institution, which happens to be, in this case, Oceanview. So Oceanview and their multi-year guaranteed annuity is an A- minus excellent uh, rated by A and Best. Me and my advisors across the country are typically never going to use anything less than an A-. minus. Uh, just because that just increases risk if uh, an insurance company goes in insolvent. I get that question often, whether the insurance company is going to go bankrupt. I mean, every insurance company is regulated by the state in which they do business. So in New Jersey, it's no picnic. 
in order for an insurance company to do business here in New Jersey, they must contribute to something called a guaranteed fund. But they also, you know, not only they put money in to participate that just for not only themselves, but any other insurance company that does business in the state, they have each other's backs. But that being said, the, the insurance industry over the years, if you look at banks and savings and loans and the amount of defaults that have happened, you know, in the last 30 years versus insurance companies, it's 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 a monumental difference. I'm much more comfortable with the financial reserves that are required of an insurance company to do business in a state versus what a bank is required or a savings and loan is required. But that being said, you know, that's just a, a benchmark that we typically like to use. I don't like to use B plus companies once or twice I have, but it's not typically my, my mainstream, but for purposes of this call, I'm very comfortable with their financials. And here's their offer. Now they just had rate increases. So if you're looked at the market today and you see that it's down over a thousand points and you go, oh my God, I can't take this anymore. The, an option might be, so you have two, yeah, and, and that's the other thing is when you see the market and the market's down a thousand points, it's which index, right? So maybe it's the S&P, maybe it's the NASDAQ tech sector has been getting crushed. We'll talk about that. Is your holdings in that area? So you might lose money and maybe some of the stocks and the equities over have lost value. But you're not matched up or mirrored identically unless you're in an S&P index. If you're in the S&P index and the S&P lost 100 points, then yes, in fact, you, you pretty much are pretty uh, close to that. But if you're, if you're looking at the Dow and the Dow is down 1,000, well, that's only 30 stocks. So you just got to put that in perspective. Remember what I've talked about before is that the, that the news networks, they like noise. They need, they need information to be able to spew, whether it be positive or negative, so they can tell you and create and generate emotional swings, right? So that's what they live off of, fear and greed. So those two things, at the end of the day, you have to, that's part of our job is to manage expectations, to help manage emotions. Take a step back and go, look, as long as we have a strategic plan. So my thinking is typically bonds we've talked about in the, in the past that are not an area that are going to do well on a go forward basis in a rising interest rate environment. And I think everybody that is listening to the news will see that interest rates are going up. The Fed just raised the interest rates a half a point yesterday. The market liked it for a little while, and then they went back and slept on it overnight and didn't like it. So that's the equities market. Bond markets didn't like it either. So you turn around and you go, wow, my 60-40 portfolio, the bond section, lost money. It's going to be a hard area of our portfolio to recover. I also don't believe that we can time the market. We can't sit here and go, okay, get in, get out, get in, get out. That has been proven. Care who you are, how savvy you are, cannot be done with any degree of predictability. However, you can take your winnings, or you can put in stop losses, or you can add a tactical component to your overall investment philosophy. And that's what I'm suggesting here. Look, if you're going to turn around and say, hey, I've had enough, don't like not being able to sleep at night. And if your 401k, if you own an IRA, you can absolutely make that decision yourself. But if you don't own an IRA and you have a 401k and your plan allows an in-service distribution or you're over age 59 and a half, either one of those things, you can utilize this strategy. And what this is saying, you have a guarantee from an insurance company that we're going to put it in a tax environment of an IRA. We're going to move it from a trustee to trustee. So that way you're not actually taking collective receipt of it. And it's going to go into the account, and depending on the size, it's minimum is 20,000, between 20 and 80, it's 2.7% on a two-year annuity. Not too bad, right? Beats a 10% loss, beats a 20% loss, or on a high bands, 2.85. You know, they have longer terms, four years, five years, seven years, 10. I didn't get into all that because I think it's a short-term solution to think about to be able to help give you peace of mind. And let's see, I think a recession is still on the horizon. I think it's going to be not tomorrow, not next month, not three months from now, but I do believe in the next 12 to 24 months, we will see that. But if your money's locked up and now you're ready to say, hey, 
I've come out from underneath that. Now I'd like to put it back in the market. Now we can step back into an arena when markets should have settled down and will probably be in a lower environment. That's the thought process. If it's something that, that you'd like to take advantage of, send me an email, send me a text, a phone call to the office, and we'll be in touch. You know, I was in Texas this week, Monday, Tuesday, I've just been covered up all week, slowly getting bar- unburied, but I'm never too busy, whether it's me, you get Caitlin, you get Keith, we can help answer your questions, right? So we're doing this for a lot of our clients. If we can help you out, maybe you don't have any an IRA and maybe you just want to see if you can even do this. Well, the first step is check with your uh, plan sponsor. See if they even allow an in-service distribution because if your plan doesn't allow, it's not an option. So the last thing I want to say is to each of you that are mothers that are on the call, happy Mother's Day, right? My mom's not on the call, but she's down there in Florida. Hug the ones you're with. We have very limited time on this planet. I just blows my mind. I'm 57. And, you know, my mom's getting up there. Uh, You know, she's down in Florida. If you have children and you're a mother and uh, you're able to celebrate, awesome. If you you have an opportunity, your mom's still with us, make sure you reach out, you spend time, give her a hug. And as always, we want to thank you each and every week. Hopefully this uh, continues to bring value to you. You know, we're getting good turnout. If you know anybody that should be thinking about some of this stuff, you know, we record these calls. We can send you the recording and let them go watch it. And hopefully you've gotten a a sense of my personality. I'm very low key. I'm not trying to force a solution down to, to sell you something. I mean, if something needs to be sold, at least you should understand how it works. So this is my contact information. And if you need me, please reach out, stay safe, and look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.